Hello and welcome back. It's the Clay Golem once again. Um, we are back looking at a new module, an add-on that we've not looked at previously in this uh, series. We're going to be looking at Monk's uh, Enhanced Journal. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> Brilliant. Nice one, eh? Um, okay, so let's go to our settings and go to our manage modules. Uh, look at all of our active, active modules. This is, I'm in our test world. Um, and this is the test world we use for doing MIDI QOL. Um, but I've stripped everything else out so we can mess around, we can make mistakes and things, and it won't affect our actual game setup. So as you can see, active modules wise, I only have uh, Monk's Enhanced Journal installed. That's it. So save that. Hello. Oh, it doesn't want to save it because uh, it's already installed. Huh. Great. <laughs> All right. So. Um, the reason why we got to this point is because we were in Phandalin in our other series where we we're making Phandalin and Below, the Shattered Obelisk adventure, uh, and we had a little conversation, well I did, with myself, with you guys, not that you responded at that point, um, about setting up uh, shops for some of our locations. And I suggested that Monk's Enhanced Journal was capable of doing that as long as it was still compatible. It suggests that it is still compatible. Um, which is brilliant. So uh, hopefully this will work for us. Now Monk's Enhanced Journal does a whole bunch of things. Uh, just to give you an idea, some of the things that it can, allegedly it can do, not tested, um, is the fact that you can uh, obviously do journal entries with pictures, uh, you can include people in their places, build encounters within the journal, uh, slideshows of images, um, you can create quests within there, uh, that you can create checklists, you can create shops, you can create loot tables, um, all sorts of things. Now, some of those have been superseded with the uh, 3.0 game engine updates, such as the loot tables. And we've looked at that in a previous video, that just without using any add-ons, we can now do that and create that. I'm interested for this video only looking at the shop aspect because I feel that's the bit that we are missing at the moment those other functions they're not necessary right now although they might make our life easier you'll have to come back and look at them uh, especially the quest one I quite like that I quite like the idea of that um, right so how do we go about do this now we know so we've got nothing on here we can create a uh, we're going to journal and we can create a map note here and we're going to stick it on here and we're going to call here this the Stone Hill Inn and we can create a corresponding journal entry. We've done this before, this is normal. Uh, here we go. Now, this looks slightly different. You can see just at the top bar here it says Monk's Enhanced Journal. This looks slightly different. We've got this bar on the right that we never had before. It's just kind of rearranged stuff. But we can create an entry here. So we're clicking on that and I've just dragged this into the middle for you, just like we had before. Um, and we can create whatever we want. Here's our description. Um, we can edit this. We can fill in our description, etc. And that's gonna show up just as it did before. So everything's working as normal, just a slightly different layout. But you can see these sections appearing on this bit over here as well as over here, or these bits within this particular journal. Um, let's do create entry again. Bring that over here. So we know about text. We know about images. We know about rule. These are all kind of normal. But look at all these extra things. We can create an encounter, an event, um, lists, loot, organization, people, places, points of interest, quests, which is one I want to look at. So I'd quite to look at encounter, I'd quite to look at like to look at quest, and I'd quite to like like to look at loot at some point. But what I want to look at here is shop. So I'm going to create this as a shop. Um, doesn't matter what I call this, this is the test world. Toblin Supplies, it's a shop, and I click create. Now look at this journal entry. Uh, it's got this thing up here, it says it's Toblin Supplies. We can tell it what kind of shop it is. Um, it's an inn. We can tell it what location it's in if we want to. We don't have to fill this in. It's in Fandolin. Uh, and we can put a description. 
it's a shop okay um, we can add some details so under description yeah we can put anything we like there you can see we've got the normal text editing abilities here now under details oh look we can set what time the shop is open open from 8 until 5 now this is, is this is a tavern isn't it we're gonna make that 11 o'clock in the evening and we're gonna say it's open from 9 um, and we can set the shop open or closed what does that mean okay we'll get to that uh, we can make it open based on the world clock so if by ticking this it's now decided that actually the world clock says that that should be closed but we can so if we're using the world clock properly and we're unpausing and pausing the game and letting time move that's where some of the add-ons like calendar and things will help manage that you can actually have your shop automatically open and close if you want to why do we want it open and closed because the next two ones player purchasing only the game master can buy stuff from this shop anyone can buy from this shop or anyone so the players can request to purchase so i'm going to put it on players request purchase and what about buy back it won't buy from players anybody can just sell anything they want to back to this shop or they can offer to sell it in which case the, the DM will have that choice of saying yes or no okay so I'm gonna leave that off as won't purchase from players for this instant uh, actually let's put it on anyone we're testing <laughs> even even though Toblin in his inn is probably not going to want to buy rusty old goblin chainmail or something like that um, let's leave it on anyone for this purpose so we can set up our shop like this if we have the shop open players can have this interaction where they can try to buy stuff and they can try to sell stuff if it's closed they won't be able to do this it will just tell them the shop's closed so again if you're going to give your players the freedom to just look you've got access to the shops in town go buy whatever you want to buy let's crack on with the adventure sort of thing you can do that and just give them that freedom except that freedom is only limited to whatever hours you set for each shop which is i think is really really nice I like the way we I like the way you can do that if you want to okay we've also got a notes tab over here for anything so this says you'll only be viewable by you now by you i assume it means the dm uh, relationships enhanced journal entry here to make a relationship so i think that means that you might have a journal entry about um the inn you might have a journal entry about um the the inn owner so toblin and you can drag those in and link them i'm not worried about that myself that for this purpose i don't think that's i think that's over complicated stuff what we do want is items okay now i'm just going to move this slightly i'm going to make this a little bit bigger now you can see it says here in the middle drag items here to add them to the shop Oh, what items let's go to the SRD so I'm going up to my compendium packs the D&D &D SRD items and spells items so we're going to bring this list up on the left hand side what is it Toblin's going to sell let's go to food he's going to sell rations let's drag that across and it's going to ask us how many rations do I want him to have in stock 10 this has been added to the shop it's a ration there's 10 of them and it's automatically using the player's handbook prices so they cost five each um, and he'll buy them back at five each as well i think that's the standard prices uh, and this is to say it's consumable in other words once they've once they've bought it um, i think it means it doesn't actually go into their inventory because they've they've used it up so you can have that flagged on for food they're eating in the inn flagged off for buying rations to take on the road we can also add water skins in here he's got a couple of water skins to sell but we can drag anything oh, he's got an amulet just one five gold piece amulets in there um he's got some boots of speed left over from his adventuring days four thousand gold if you happen to have them um we can just drag all this stuff in anything we like he's got an old breastplate there we go 400 gold if you've got it some leather armor he's got some of that as well i mean obviously this doesn't make sense for the inn in this case for the tavern there's a couple of shields he's got 
Let's stick a couple of weapons and bits in as well. Uh, he's got ammunition, he's got containers, um, you know, he's got a backpack available. Uh, oh, not equipment. Uh, equipment packs. Oh, I see, like Dungeoneers packs and stuff like that. It's all in there. Loot stuff, you know, he's got a random book. Um, he's got a hammer. He's got a 10 foot ladder to sell if you want it. Got some paper. He's got quite a lot of paper. I don't know. Just <laughs> whatever. Uh, the classic 10 foot pole that players always seem to forget that they're carrying. Um, potions. Yeah, he's got um, you know, he's got a vial of acid. You know, if you've got the money, you can have it. Scrolls, tools. Um, he's got some carpenters' tools. Again, not really applicable for this. And we've got some weapons. Um, he's got a blowgun he can sell and a battle axe he can sell. Uh, and he's got he's got about 12 clubs because if anybody wants to buy clubs he can just smash up one of his chairs and go here you go have a leg <laughs> there's a club for you there we go we now got shop it's good in it but how does this actually how does this actually work all right so let's close that um, and get rid of our SRD just get rid of that um, so by clicking on the uh, get rid of I hate it when I do that so just by double left, left clicking on this, we open this up, we can see the description, we can see, um, oh, it's just where I had the Stonehill in, uh, and we've got supplies and the shop appears here. Okay, so if we've got a character, who have we got? We've got Sorryman. Let's chuck Sorryman out here. Let's say, I want to get, try and get this organized. Hang on a second. Let's make sure that you can see what's going on as well as possible here. Where are you, Sorryman? Okay, so we've got Sorryman in the middle here. With this, he's not his usual token because we haven't added those on. Um, can I make that a bit, a bit nicer? Okay, let's look at Sorryman's equipment, his inventory. So he's got a few bits already in his inventory. He's got some clothes, um, his spell book, um, and bits like that. And he's got 265 gold. I'm wondering if I can just... Let's just make that a nice even 200 gold for us all right so what happens if Sorryman wants to buy stuff now remember we're logged in as DM can he buy himself a new backpack he doesn't have one now in theory oh I've just clicked on it he's expanded it he should be able to drag that across and it pops up this saying how many do you want to buy now there is only one backpack two gold now as the DM I can overrule this price if I want to and go, actually, no, don't like Sorryman. They're going to charge him more, um, whatever I want to do. But let's say yes. Uh, the gold has gone down. So Sorryman's gold up here that was on 200 is now 198. And at the top here, we've got his backpack. Let's buy something else. Let's buy him a, let's buy him three sheets of paper. Okay, so they're two silver each. Uh, there's 20 of them. I'm going to drag that over here. It asks for quantity. I want three. It's automatically going to say, oh, three times two. That's six silver. Is it okay to buy these? I'm going to click yes. Sorryman's gold has gone down by one. And it's given him his change in silver. So it's calculated. It's converted that gold coin into silver to actually pay that, which is great. Um, and now we find, oh, where is it? Um, he bought three sheets of paper. Where is it? I wasn't expecting that. Where's it gone? Why has he not got his paper? Did it put it, didn't put it in his backpack. Where has it gone? I wasn't expecting that. That's a slight issue, isn't it? Where'd his paper go? <laughs> hmm. It's taken his money, but it hasn't given him his paper. Okay, well, what if we do it with a, with, do it with one pole? Just say yes. Uh, it's taken his money. Where's where's your where's your pole? Okay, so I wasn't expecting this. Uh, I haven't got I haven't got filters on or anything. Hmm. Now this was working, um, and I wonder if this is one of the issues with the updates and things with the new character sheet i wonder if that's what's going on here and it's not quite working the way we would want it to it's taking his money it bought his backpack all right but 
Where's his pole? Where's his paper? It's not in here. And it's not in here. I haven't got any filters. It's just gone. What happens is, let's try testing. Let's go to the legacy sheet. This is the old character sheet. Which, perfectly functional, but not as pretty. Now, we can see that backpack is now put down here as a container, rather than, um, you know, uh, as a separate item. Okay, uh, what we got under features, obviously we shouldn't have paper under there. Um, it shouldn't be under spellbook, it shouldn't be under effects, it shouldn't be under biography. It should just be in his inventory. It's not here. Okay, so let's try this again then. We are going to give him, he doesn't have a water skin at the moment, buy one water skin. Just one. Um, he's currently got three silver, so we'd expect that to drop to one. And it has and it's added his water skin. Okay, so that has worked. Good. That's what we expected to see. Just close that. Um, get rid of that. Let's try again. And you can look. Can you see in the shop that's now greyed out? Because there's none available. That's what we wanted. Pole is also greyed out because there's none available now. Let's buy one sheet of paper. It's calculated the gold down again. Calculated the silver. And it's dumped a bit of paper in here. Let's buy two more sheets of paper. Now it's not automatically merging these, um, but it is adding them on. But that's what we wanted to see. That's what I was expecting to see is the fact that it is dumping this stuff correctly into the inventory. If I change that sheet back to the um, to what is now the default sheet, da da, has he got that equipment? So those things have stayed which is what we wanted, the water skin um, and those two different lots of paper, okay? Now, obviously, we would want to consolidate that and we'd probably go just get rid of that and get rid of that, you know, add one there um, and we can remove one because uh, that's, yeah, untidy. But you can see how this is supposed to work. Clearly a slight problem with the character sheet that's not working. Um, and when the player is logged in, depending on, back to this, depending on these settings, Okay, um, we'll define whether the player can do exactly what we were just doing. And request purchase, it was giving me that pop-up window and a chance to say yes or no to that purchase. One thing we didn't do was to see if this shop will buy stuff back. So let's try that again. Oh, and look, we've got this track of who did it. So if you've got your shop open and players are just doing their own purchasing willy-nilly whenever they like, you can come in and see who exactly bought what. Okay, so if, if you need to as a DM, I mean, if you're worried about that, you probably shouldn't give them random <laughs> access to it, but hey, you do you. Okay, so sorry, man, he's got the shop open. He wants to sell this water skin. He doesn't need it anymore. What will happen when we drag it this way? How many would you like to sell? I'm going to sell one, and I'm not going to get it for two silver. I'm only going to get half the money back. So let's say yes. So Sorry Moon is currently on five silver. And we currently have, how many water skins have we got here? We've currently got one. So yes to that. The shop now has an additional water skin. It hasn't added it on. That's interesting. That's locked now. Um, but Sorry Moon is now on six silver. So he's managed to sell that back. I can also sell this paper back. I'm going to sell three of them. Now what it's doing is in groups of three, see what it's doing, it's locking that because uh, I believe it's because the player sold it and they have a chance to buy back the item they may have accidentally sold rather than they sell it and another player instantly nicks it. <laughs> so this is effectively in store at the shop um, and we can kind of release it to say, yes, actually that's available for general sale now by doing that. Now, of course, you can have multiple entries for these water skins, but you might be better off just kind of going, oh, do you know what? Just get rid of the extra one. There we go, two water skins. And you can tidy up your shop at the end of the session or, or whatever it may be. So that works very nicely. It works both ways, doesn't it? Um, you can buy and you can sell. Really, really good. Now we are going to use this and set up Fandolin um, and set up some of our shops in Fandolin in our live game. So you'll see a bit more detail of actually us doing that in action. But I just wanted to show you what this can do and the power of it. Um, but I also want to look at a couple of the uh, the settings that we might want to use for a module like this. So at the top here, apart from the description, 
we've got a couple of different things here. We can show the shop to players. Uh, we can edit the description. We can add a background sound effect. So if you want, you know, when they come into this shop, i.e. they open this shop, you can have the journal entry play music for them while they are perusing the goods. Um, so depending on the shop, uh, let's say they go to an alchemist shop, you could have a soundtrack that plays bubbling potions in the background while they're in the shop. Yeah, you can do that. Maybe if they're in the inn, you might have some general background chatter noises that play while they're in the shop. Yeah, you can do that and maybe we'll play with that. Um, convert. I don't know what I'm converting. I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> uh, we've got jump to pin. Okay, so wherever that pin is on the map, which is over here, uh, we can jump to it if we want to. But here are some uh, some fields that we can edit if we want to. So notice we've got two things here. We've got tabs and prices. So these tabs relate to this description, detail, items, relationship and notes. So we might say, look, don't show the relationships. Don't show the notes because we don't care about those. Um, and we can save changes. We've now got our description tab, our details tab uh, and our items tab. Okay, so we can change those if we want to. If we look at the prices one here, this is where we can set up for it automatically to do the pricing for us. So it's going to use the default stuff from the SRD for prices. Okay, so two silver pieces for a sheet of paper. We can change this and we can say, actually, this shop's quite expensive. Everything's going to be times by 1.2. It's going to be more expensive to buy here than your average PHB things. And Fandolin makes sense for that because it is kind of you know, I've had problems getting supplies in for a start and it's quite far away from the major cities so you could gen you absolutely could get away with saying it's could be a bit more expensive here you can also change how much they buy back for so you might say well actually 0.8 because they're short of supplies so they're we're more willing to buy stuff off of players um, because a lot of things are in short demand in short supply so this becomes a town where it is more valuable to sell stuff here than other places, but it's more expensive to buy stuff. A cunning player party could say, hang on a minute, let's pop to Neverwinter. Let's buy a whole cartload of stuff, which they're going to pay normal price for, uh, and then bring it to Fandolin and sell it. Now, at the moment, they're going to make a loss, but there is potential if they have somewhere they can get a good deal for bulk buying and they're paying less money than they're going to sell it here you've got a thriving economy you can make that work just be careful because some player will find a loophole <laughs> but apart from the defaults look you can do it for individual things weapons are cheaper here or more expensive uh, consumables are cheaper here or more expensive maybe to buy um maybe to buy tools is really expensive here but they pay really well for tools so suddenly it's worth bringing tools back to sell here as opposed to consumables yeah so food and things like that um it's nice isn't it you can just yeah it's brilliant you can set up these little economies and if you've got a wide ranging area where they're going to be visiting lots of towns and things like that um yeah, you can have each one uh, set with its own preferences. You know, well, this is a farming community. Yeah, their food costs are going to be a bit cheaper, but maybe they need more tools. You go to the dwarves and they're going to be selling tools and things cheaper, but they might be demanding something else. Um, yeah, you can have a little economy set up. Just be careful not to get too complex with it and watch out for those pitfalls of players taking the mickey. Um but wouldn't it be nice to be in a position where your players go, we've got a whole bunch of, bunch of loot. Where's the best place for us to sell it? Oh, we're going to go sell it over there because we get a better price. And that's a way that as a DM you can potentially control, or no, not control, manipulate where the party choose to go because they're after the best deal. Yeah, so you know that if, you know, you can have an NPC say, oh, you know, well, you want to head off to such and such because they have great prices on that stuff there. And the players suddenly go, oh, OK. And when they get there, they actually have good prices on that stuff. That would be nice. OK, right. One last thing we can do. Um, boots of speed, 4,000 gold pieces. Right. Well, this guy doesn't really want to sell them. So I can manually update these prices if I want to. 
okay so I can look at the description um, and I can manually update prices on here if I wish to do that so let's just prove that works because uh, I haven't actually tested this since we did it before let me move back to the other character sheet where we know that's going to work okay um, bring up inventory sorry mum you're going to buy this ladder this ladder is going to be one gold piece instead of one silver piece which is extraordinarily expensive for a ladder but hey ladders are in short demand so we would expect we're on 196 gold and nine silver we would expect to spend one gold when we do this now uh, yep so it's come up with the correct price and there we go he's just sold that he's just bought that for one gold and if he wants to sell it back again he's going to get one gold back lovely jubbly okay because it's one for one um and why the reason it's one for one is because when i did the prices i put that back to one instead of 0 0.5 <laughs> that's why it was one for one okay so that we just proved that that works as well he bought it and then he sold it back for the exact same amount because i had them for one to one so yeah you can you can have individual items if you want or you can have those groups of items set by prices now obviously doing it by groups is much quicker to set up what I really, really like about this is once I've put a bit of effort into set up a particular shop, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, they go to that shop and go, oh, what's for, even if I don't have the players been able to buy and sell, I, they visit here and go, oh, does he sell um, Splint Mail armor? No, no, he doesn't. He's got breastplate armor and leather armor. Uh, oh, right, okay. Well, how much is breastplate armor? Well, that's going to be 400 gold to you, mate. You, it's right there. It's right in front of your face. Lovely. No need to pick up the PHB. No need to flick through pages or calculate what's the difference in prices. You've done all the hard work before the session. Mwah! Chef's kiss when it comes to just smooth running of your game. You can get enthusiastic again. It's one of those ones that just mm, makes a big difference to the flow of a game. If you've ever sat there and you spent nearly the entire session with the party shopping, you will understand my enthusiasm for this kind of add-on. Um, I'd say there's other things we can do with with this like checklists and quests and stuff not going to look at it in this this is just about shop uh, and I think we've covered everything we need to so if you want to see that in action and us putting that together um, the next one that we do that is looking at the Fandelva series so session three of that playlist um, you will see us creating that shop one thing that I don't have when we go to the SRD just before um, you know I, f I finish and then I don't finish um, what we don't have in here is things like accommodation a bed for the night um, we've got food but look it's limited to animal feed rations and water skin we haven't got meals here but we can just duplicate we can create our own in fact we might do that we'll create some items for the Stonehill Inn, such as the price for a room, the price for um, the shared common room for breakfast and things like that. And we could put together a little price list. Lovely jubbly. Take care, guys. See you in the next one.